Hi, hello. Welcome to Delacruz Engineering Videos. Uh, this is Engineer Delacruz, and this time we'll be solving a random problem on structural engineering and construction. Uh, this is a passboard problem, CE board, no? And uh, this came out last uh, May 2015, I think. Okay, so um, we'll be solving this one. Um, as you can see in this figure, uh, this problem involves footing on piles and actually my um, halo siyang concrete no my halong concrete and a little bit of the strength of materials all right okay so medyo mahaba to so let's try to solve this problem all right so here uh, we'll be using the matcad software okay so actually this is uh, our preparation for the upcoming refresher program on the GERTC review okay okay so I'll be using the MATCAD software here para auto-generated yung mga calculations natin so in the problem the pile cap shown in the figure supports a 400 mm square column you can see here no? square footing supports a 400 mm square column so ito yung column natin so as you can see in the figure, uh, the column is subjected to an actual load P and uh, a moment about its uh, cent uh, about its center. No? So given yung load's actual dead load, uh, we have here 430 kN DPD, actual live load. We have here um, 380 kN, actual earthquake load denoted as P sub E that is 220 kN. And the moment due to earthquake, so denoted siya as e, uh, M sub E, 170 kilonewtons per uh, kilonewtons meter. So also, uh, binigay yung load combinations that is D plus L or dead load plus live load U or factored uh, load, uh, 1.4 of the dead load plus 1.7 live load. And the second combination is D plus L plus E. So basically dead plus live load plus earthquake load all right okay so yung questions here is the required nominal wide beam shear stress uh, required nominal punching shear stress at the critical section uh, by the way mga critical shear yung hinahanap dito and determine the required moment at critical section all right so how can we start this one Okay, now to calculate the shear stress stresses here, uh, or even the moment, the required moment for design, um, dapat makuha natin yung reaction on each pile. Okay, so by the way, yung assumption natin dito sa pile footing is that the uh, only the pile will resist the reactions or the, will resist the forces here, no? Walang um, stresses na mai-involve sa footing natin mismo dito. Walang stress dito dapat. Okay? So, basically, lahat ng forces will be transferred to the pile. Yan yung assumption natin basta pile footing. Okay, so how can we solve the pile reactions here? So, first, okay. So, as you can see, binigay yung dalawang load combination. So, Para makuha natin yung critical shear stress, critical nominal shear stress uh, for wide beam shear and for uh, punching shear stress, I uh, will be considering these two combinations. Uh, let's check the dead load plus live load combination and also let's check the dead load plus live load plus the earthquake live uh, load combination. So kung ano yung mas malaki na makukuha natin na uh, shear stress, then yan yung mag -go govern Okay? So, by considering the load combination, dead load plus live load, so, mawawala lang yung moment natin. Tatanggalin muna natin yung moment natin. Okay? So, considering the dead load plus live load, so, yung reaction here, um, obviously, yung P is nasa gitna, so, dapat yung reaction natin is uniformly distributed. Okay? So, for the question number one, the nominal wide beam shear stress, um, dapat, uh, yung critical section, by the way, according to the code, that should be taken at a D distance from the face of the support. Okay? 
So ito yung phase of our, our support. So that would be taken at a D distance from that phase. Ayun. Okay? Ito yung um, cutting line natin dyan. So basically, um, i-consider natin tong portion na yan. Okay? Which in this case, ito yung naka 3D. So dalawang pile lang yung may involve dyan. So if the pile reaction here, pile reaction here, should be um, evenly distributed. So basically, yung P natin dyan, madidistribute natin on how many piles. Alright? So I denoted the reaction as RU. Dapat yung design gagamitin natin yung ultimate. Or um, mas general term na factored load. Okay? So yung P na gagamitin natin dyan is the factored load. Alright? So by the way, ay, balik ko muna. So, by the way, nilagay ko na dito lahat ng mga datas, no? So, we have the dead load here, we have the live load, we have the earthquake loads. Then, yung column 400 mm um, square, nilagay ko na lang siya as C, no? Denoted as column, that is 400 mm. Square siya, so same dimension here and here. And the in this figure, uh, nilagay na rin yung effective depth D, no? Uh, for concrete, that is called effective depth, the distance from the up, uppermost fiber to the centroid of the reinforcing bars. That is 0.6 meters. And itong mga load combination, andito na siya, uh, dead load plus live load. So ito, nilagay ko na lang diretso. Okay. Again, this is auto-generated um, calculation. Um, for the dead load plus live load plus the earthquake load, so we have 1.32 1.1 and 1.1 of earthquake load. For the moment, so I denoted this one as MU. That should be, since yung moment na andito is yung 4 earthquake lang. So yung combination natin dito is 4 earthquake. That is 1.1 for the earthquake. Alright? Okay, so tinawag ko tong PU1 for the load combination 1. This is PU2 for the load combination 2. So, MU na lang dito since wala namang moment sa dead load plus live load. Alright? So, how will we start this one? Again, the reaction should be uh, solved first. So, bakit natin isosolve muna yung reaction? Now, ito yung magiging reaction natin. Of course, um, these uh, two piles here is ito yan. Okay? So, if titingnan natin yan dyan, ito yung magiging pile reaction natin. Na yung shear stress, uh, nominal wide beam shear stress na kukunin natin, uh, that should be the force, shear force over the area. So, yung um, shear force natin, ito yung BU natin. Okay, that is the shear force. Obviously, masasolve natin yan by equilibrium equation considering in this figure. That is just twice of the RU. Okay. Now, if we have this VU that is ultimate or factored shear, i-divide natin yan ng shear area, so parallel sa kanya, then mas masosolve natin yung required or the factored shear. No, may na factored wide beam shear stress dyan. So, i-divide natin yan ng area na to, This yellow one. Okay? So, yung area natin uh, na i-consider is yung parallel na area sa kanya. That should be uh, this dimension. So, if titingnan natin yan dito sa top view, ito yan. That is 3.2 meters. Okay? Multiplied by the effective depth, 0.6. So, yung area na i-consider natin, effective area of the concrete, up to the centroid of the reinforcing bars lang. Okay? So, by the way, ito yung mga reinforcing bars natin na nakalatag dyan. So, actually, my um, orthogonal reinforcing bars pa dyan or nakapatong pa ganyan but hindi ko na lang siya nilagay for simplicity. Alright? So, yung gagamitin natin effective depth since ito yung binigay so, assume natin na that is the bottom bar. Alright? Okay, let's start. Um, solve muna natin yung RU. Uh, let's say this is for part 1. Right, so this is for our part 1. So dapat, okay, uh, as you can see, sinob na natin yung load combinations, ha? 
So, yung RU dito, consider muna natin. Consider dead load plus live load. Alright. Again, uh, we'll try to solve for dead load plus live load combination. And let's, uh, we'll try to solve for dead load plus live load plus earthquake load combination. Okay, so as you can see in this figure, yung RU natin, that should be P divided by the number piles. Okay, paghahati at diyan lang ng mga piles dyan. So, since we are considering dead load plus live load combination, that is our load combination 1, then the RU here should be equals to PU1 Uh, the PU1 divided by the number of files 5. Alright, so that is in kilonewtons. Okay, claro. Claro, siguro na. So, after we solve the RU dito, uh, we'll be solving the VU, considering this figure. So, VU is obviously uh, two, twice of RU. Okay, summation of forces vertical tayo. So, VU, or the shear force VU, um, let's denote that one as VU W4 wide beam shear stress. Okay? And tawagin din natin siyang 1 for the um, load combination one. So, that is dalawang RU um, I will call this one, okay, RU. Dalawang RU dapat yung VU1 natin. Considering load combination 1. So, we have here the load of 499.2 kilonewtons. Alright. So, after we solve the uh, shear force, VU, i-divide natin yan ng shearing area. Then, that is the uh, factored shear stress at the wide beam. Okay. Uh, kaya pala siya tinawag ng wide beam since um, malapad ito. Malapad. Parang wide beam. No? From the uh, definition alone. Wide beam. So, malapad na beam. So, here, to calculate the, I will just call this one as a uh, shear ultimate. Alright? For the wide beam shear stress for the load combination one. Okay? Shear is denoted as tau. Shear ultimate or factored shear for wide beam shear stress for load combination one. So, medyo mahaba siya, no? So, that should be shear force BU W1. Alright? Ito yon. So, nasa itaas. Divided by the shearing area. So, ano yung magiging shearing area natin dito? So, yung parallel sa kanya. So, yung yellow portion na ito. Okay? That yellow portion that is at this dimension here, from here to here. Uh, dimension from here to here. Ito, this one, multiplied by the effective depth. Alright, so this dimension here, obviously that is um, 2 meters plus 2.6 or that is 3.2 meters. Alright. Okay, divided by, again that is 3.2 meters. Again, yung shearing area ito, multiplied by the effective depth D, that is 600 mm or 0.6 meters. So, by the way, yung mga, yung calculations dito is auto-generated yung ating um, units. Okay? So, we'll be assuming that alam na natin how to convert units dito dapat. Okay? So, nakalagay na yung D natin dyan, na-declare na natin yung D. Uh, we have here 0.6 effective depth D. Alright, so what is the value of the required or the ultimate Mo, uh, ultimate shear? So that is 0 0.26 megapascal. So take note that yung hinahanap natin is the nominal wide beam shear stress at critical section. Okay, so yung critical section natin dito, actually ito na yun. That is according to the code for wide beam. So, paano natin isolve yung ating nominal? Since this is factored. This one is a factored shear. Shear stress. 
Okay, that one is, a, is the factor shear stress. Now, to calculate the uh, nominal, take note, remember that um, always that the factored, factored load or factored stress or factored moment dapat equivalent yan kay reduction factor uh, multiplied by um, the nominal. Diba? Or uh, generalize natin, okay? Uh, U, ano? Okay, ganun na lang. Okay? That should be multiplied by the uh, reduction factor times the nominal. Ganyan yan dapat. Okay? So, from here, we can say that the nominal, uh, nominal shear stress should be equals to should be equals to the factored here u divided by the reduction factor ayan okay so masosolve natin yung nominal just just by dividing this factored shear stress to the reduction factor so by the way hindi pa natin na declare yung mga reduction factors natin dito declare ko lang sa ating uh, sa taas all right I'll just scroll the scroll this the, uh this one. So reduction factor for shear. Remember that that is uh denoted as V. So by the way, yung code na ito is 2001 pala no sa May 2015 na uh, board exam. Okay, so for 2001 in a CP uh, reduction factor for shear that is 0 0.85. For NSCP 2015, we have that as 0.75. Okay, for shear. Well, anyway, sa problem na ito, um, yung magbabago lang is yung reduction factor and the uh, load combination. Ito. Sa NSCP 2015, yung load combination dito is 1.2, 1.6. No? Um, I'm not sure in the dead plus live plus earthquake load, but ibibigay naman yan sa board exam natin. Okay? So, yung nagbago lang dito is ito. This is for the shear and for the moment, um, denote ko na lang siya as a uh, fee na ganito. That is 0 0.90. This is for the reduction factor per moment. Of course, yung uh, number one, kinukonsider natin is for shear pa. Alright? So, na-declare na natin yan dyan. So, we'll be having the um, nominal shear stress. Ayan. That would be um, tawagin yung siyang for load combination 1. That would be tau u for y beam shear stress 1. Actually, ito yun. Okay? This value divided by the reduction factor for shear. Alright? This is for shear. So, how much is that value? Gawin yung siyang MPA. That is 0 0.306 mega pascal. Again, now, if nasa choices ito, pwede tayong, uh, pwede na nating piliin yan, no, sa board exam. Pwede na nating piliin yan since nakuha natin yung um, exact value. Now, take note that this is just considering the dead load plus live load combination pa lang. Okay? We need to check the dead load plus live load plus earthquake load combination. Now, kung ano yung mas malaking shear stress na ibibigay niya, yan yung critical. Okay? So, as is muna to, hindi, hindi pa natin, uh, hindi pa tayo assured na this is the answer. So, we'll be considering the dead load plus live load combination. Okay? So, continue tayo that to consider, consider dead plus live plus earth quick load combination. Ayan. Okay? Now, to consider the dead load plus earthquake plus live load combination, yung magbabago lang nat uh, dito, guys, is yung VU. And of course, the RU. Okay? Now, take note for dead plus live plus earth, may moment na tayo. May moment na tayo since, uh, therefore, yung um, reactions natin sa pile, magbabago. Okay? If we'll try to analyze that one, Ganito dapat yung um, profile ng ating reaction sa pile. Ganito yung profile. May moment dito, right? 
So, pag ganito yung moment, dapat mas malaki yung reaction dito at this row. Alright? Because, iaangat nung moment nung moment low dito sa left side, then magle-less yung ating reaction dito. Dito naman, ipupush siya sa kabilang side, then dapat mas greater yung load natin dito. So, ano yung gagamitin natin na uh, load dito in order for that to be critical? So, denoted ko siya dito, RU1, RU2, RU3. So, of course, we'll be using RU3. Dapat. Alright, RU3. Because that is for us to calculate the shear critical, shear force critical. That is RU3. Now, the question here is how to calculate the RU3. Now, as you can see, that is just a um, axial and bending stress combination. Diba remember, for the axial and bending combination, um, denoted natin yan as the F, no? F sub, oh no, the stress, no? The stress is equivalent to, remember this formula, sa uh, pre-stress nga, andito yan, plus, actually plus or minus yan, um, MY over the inertia. Uh, of course, yung inertia natin dyan, that should be global moment of inertia. Ito yon for combined stresses, no? Uh, due to axial load and due to the moment. So, dito, since we, we want to calculate the maximum, maximum reaction RU3, so, ipa-plus natin yan, no? Of course, dapat yung pinakamalaki yung kukunin natin. So, that should be plus. Now, take note that this one is for stress. Yung unit na makukuha natin dito is MPA. MPA yan. Alright, stress yan. Now, we want to calculate the, uh, what we call the, the actual force, forces on each pile. So, stress, multiply natin by area. So, pag piles, guys, yung makukuha ay yung gagamitin natin na um, formula, ganito na siya. That would be force over the number of piles plus MY over um i pa rin naman no i pa rin naman siya uh, denote lang natin yan ng i so actually ito this is summation of y d squared or tawagin niyo na lang siyang i for general so actually this stress formula minultiply lang natin ng area so makakancel yung area dito and by the way yung ij or global moment of inertia di ba we know that that is a summation but that is i uh, individual moment of inertia plus area uh, distance from the distance from the uh, centroid of each pile to the centroidal or global inertia okay remember this is a transfer formula so dito yung i natin dito is actually uh, I'm negligible na yung I natin dito on each pile. Nene-neglect nene -neglect natin yan. No? And hindi siya masyadong magmamatter sa ating outcome na solution. That's why ito maka-cancel out. Yung matitira dito is area area or AD squared. So, if i-multiply natin to ng area, then yung area dito maka-cancel out at yung area dito maka-cancel out. Again, neg uh, neglect na natin yung I dyan. So, yung matitira dito actually is D squared transfer distance. Okay? So, yung transfer distance natin, that is, on each pile, so dito, yung centroidal axis natin, or kung saan nag a yung moment, is andito. No? That is the centroidal axis. So, yung ita-transfer natin na pile, uh, that is not in the centroidal axis, is apat. Isa, dalawa, tatlo, at apat. Yung isang pile dito, is nasa gitna na siya. So, we don't need to transfer that one. So, yung, bali, yung d squared natin, that is summation of d squared. This one, i-transfer natin yan dyan, dito, dito, and dito. Okay? So, uh, basically, yung i natin, uh, that is just, ilang pile yung ita-transfer natin? Isa, dalawa, tatlo, apat. 
Okay? Now, ano yung distance sila from the centroidal axis? Distance on each pile. So, if this is 2 meters, then kalahati dito is 1 meters. Therefore, that is 1 meter. Ito yung d squared natin. Okay? Times ilan sila lahat? Isa, dalawa, tatlo, apat. 4 piles lang yung transfer natin. So, i-multiply natin by 4. And that is our inertia to be used. 4 square meters. Okay? Uh, again, naka-square meters na siya because tinanggal na natin automatic yung area para force na yung makukuha natin diretsya. Okay? So, and specifically, yung kukunin natin is yung RU3. Okay? Ito man yung gagamitin natin na reaction dito para makuha yung critical. So, that should be, um, since ginagamit natin dito is the load combination 2, so tatawagin siyang PU2. Okay, yung load combination for dead plus life plus dead over the number of piles, lima sila, plus, of course, yung moment natin dito, specifically, that is the MU, no? MU, the factor, multiplied by Y over the inertia. So, by the way, ano yung Y natin dito? Okay, yung Y, actually, that is MC over I or MY over I generally. Yung, yung Y is the distance from the centroidal axis to the uh, desired point. So, yung desired point natin is ito, yung pile in row 3. So, that is the distance Y. So, yung Y natin dito, dapat, i-declare ko lang, yung Y should be 1 meters. 1 meter. Okay? From the centroidal axis to this uh, pile. That is half ng 2. Alright, so... Here, we can calculate the value of RU3 and that is in kilonewtons, 292.27 kilonewtons. Okay? So, medyo mahaba talaga. So, after we solve the RU3, masasolve na natin yung VU for um, load combination 2. Okay? So, VU for load combination 2, of course, wide beam shear stress yan. For load combination 2, again, that is just still twice of, in this case, that would be RU3. Dito. Twice of RU3. So, that is, in kilonewtons, 584.54 kilonewtons. Okay, so after we solve the VU2, then automatic, diba, we know to how to calculate the um, shear stress na. So, that should be shear stress ultimate. For wide beam shear stress load combination 2, uh, we have here um, VU, VU W2 divided by the shear stress area, this yellow portion, that is 3.2. Uh, we have here 3.2 meters multiplied by the effective depth D. So we have here MPA, 0.304 mega. Pascal. Okay? Is it correct? Yes. Now, for the nominal, nominal wide beam shear stress for load combination 2, that is uh, this one. Happy ko lang. Divide natin by the shear, uh, no, the reduction factor for shear, and we have here we have here, okay, convert natin to MPA, 0.358 MPA. Now, this is for the load combination 2. So, compare natin yan kay nominal, um, I did not call by wide beam shear stress, okay? Compare natin yan dito. So, sa kanilang dalawa, for the dead load combination plus live load and dead load plus earthquake load combination, saan yung mas critical? Of course, this um, value, considering dead plus live plus earthquake. So sometimes, pwede rin mag-govern yung dead load plus live load lang. So sa problem na ito, nag-govern yung dead plus live plus earthquake, so ito dapat yung sagot. So sa board, sa board exam, itong dalawa is binigay. So pwede talaga tayong mas calm dyan. Uh, lalong-lalo na if makita natin, uy, nasa choices yung solution ko. Nasa choices. So, 
Uh, pwede. Pwede talagang magamit natin to which uh, as the answer. So, mali na tayo doon. No? So, um, for the wide beam shear stress, Pn, um, W, that should be the maximum no? of Pn, W1 or a tau pala. Pn or tau NW2. Ayan. Dapat maximum sa kanila. Of course, yung ibibigay niya is yung kay load combination to. Ayan. Alright? So, this is the answer dapat. Ah, by the way, this problem can be seen on the CE reference 4 by DIT Gilesan niya. Oh? You can check this problem doon. Magandang practice talaga yung CE reference para sa mga board exam takers. Okay, so part 1 pa lang ito. Medyo mahaba na. Okay, how about for part 2? Uh, the nominal punching shear stress at the critical section. Okay, so tingnan nyo muna yung solution. This is for the another load combination. Okay. So, scroll down ko lang siya. Yung mga values natin uh, still naka-retain siya. And let's call this one as part 2. Alright. So, this is part 2. Uh, punching shear stress naman. So, yung punching shear stress naman, magbabago yung section na dapat nating i-consider. Okay? So, ano yung section na yon? So, ibalik muna natin. So, i-consider. Again, i-consider pa rin natin yung um, dead load plus live load and dead load plus live load plus earthquake load combination. Dalawa pa rin yung um, combination na gagamitin natin. So, yung critical section for um, the punching shear stress, according to the code, that should be taken as D, uh, half of D or D over 2 distance from the face of the support. So, ganito yan. Yan. This section, ito yung mabubutas. Punching parang binubutasan natin yung ating puting. So, basically, matatanggal ito. So, this one, ito, distance D over 2. Ito rin, distance D over 2. Ito yung D natin, effective depth. Similarly, dyan sa kabila. Distance D over 2, distance D over 2. Okay? So, yung magagamit natin dimension dito is ito, yung square dimension na yan. Take note that the column dimension we denoted that one as C. So, basically, dapat yung distance na ito, that is C plus 0.5 over D of D, the same dito, and the same dyan. Since that is E square column. Okay? So, yung consider natin na, uh, na figure dyan, dapat ito. Ayan. Okay? So, by the way, ito yung um, reinforcing bars natin, orthogonal sila. May, may top bars at may bottom bars tayo dyan. Alright? So, yung shear area natin dito is itong nasa gilid na. Yan, yung lateral area of this portion. Alright? Yung lateral area niya, of course, ito yung RU natin. Forces involved, dapat may RU. Isa na lang, no? Isang pile na lang. And may PU din tayo dyan. Uh, actually, we can also use yung portion na matira dyan, but basta shear mas uh, mas mas, uh, mas madaling gamitin ito, no? Mas magandang gamitin ito lang lalong-lalo na pag may involved na moment dito. All right? So, you can check the solution if you'll try to use the uh, the other portion of the putting. So, ito yung gagamitin ko in this solution. Na ano yung magiging effective depth natin? Will it be the same as 0.6 meters? Okay. Now, according to the code, Okay, yan yung effective depth natin. According to the code that the effective depth for punching, that this is for the NSCP, okay? NSCP 2015 or 2010. Um, according to the code that the effective depth for punching shear stress is the average of the um, orthogonal bars. So, ibig sabihin, yung top bars natin, may effective depth yan from the top of the, from the um, top surface of the concrete. Yung bottom bars, of course, magkaiba yung effective depth nila. So, average dapat sa kanila. But in this problem, this is assumed that yung effective depth na gagamitin natin is still the 0.6 meters. Now, obviously, wala naman tayong bar size diameter na binigay dito. So, hindi talaga natin makukuha yung 
um, individual effective depth nila. Alright, so we'll be assuming effective depth here is still 0.6 meters. Okay, and actually ito yung ginamit sa board exam. Um, isang effective depth lang. Okay, but in reality dapat average ng dalawa nila. Okay? Okay. So, ito yun. So, ano yung magiging shear force V yun natin for punching dyan? So, yung shear force natin, that is evenly distributed dito sa lateral area. Ganyan. Okay? This yellow portion, yan yung shear area natin. So, these small forces, that is the VU distributed on that area for basically, yan yung shear stress natin. Okay? So, that is just the net force between PU and the RU. Alright? So, calculating the RU here, uh, remember that we have the RU. We are, consider tayo, okay? Consider dead plus live naman. Uh, balik tayo sa dead plus live. This is for punching, by the way. Okay? The number two is punching shear stress. Considering dead plus live load, so, ang VU natin, VU, um, denote ko siya as punching shear stress, si VUP1 for load combination 1, that is, ano, kunin, that is um, RU, RU1, okay, mine, ano, PU1, eto, net force nila, yung VU is the net force of this. Considering that figure, that is PU1 minus RU1. Okay? Itong forces lang yung involved dito. Oh, by the way, may PU1 and RU1 tayo. Okay? We already solved that one kanina. Ah, ito yung PU1 natin. Alright? So, we already solved this one doon sa part 1. And we have also the RU1. RU1 ba yung notation natin doon? Uh, Ayan, RU1. Okay, so nilagyan ko lang ng 1 dito para uh, the same, uh, para uh, RU1 man yung gagamitin natin dito. Ayan, okay. Inange ko lang konti yung notations natin doon, RU1. Alright, again, this is for the load combination 1. So, this is the shear force for uh, punching shear force. Uh, punching shear, uh, again, uh, correct, that is force. Alright? So, ito yung force. Then, ito yung madidistribute natin all throughout the lateral area dito. So, yung lateral area natin dyan, that is perimeter of this one. Okay, perimeter nito. Basically, apat na C plus 0.5 of D. Multiply ba natin by the effective depth? Alright? Claro. So, tawagin natin siyang for uh, for punching shear stress, tawagin natin siyang tau UP for load combination 1. Alright? So, shear force VUP1 punching shear uh, stress 1 over yung area natin is perimeter of this one multiplied by the effective depth. So, perimeter is apat na um, C plus 0.5 of D. Ayan. This is uh, still the perimeter. And then, i-multiply pa natin ng effective depth D. Okay? Yung perimeter natin dyan is ito. Alright. So, again, we have the value of C and D doon. Nakadeclare na natin yan sa part, uh, unang part. So, ano yung value nito? Uh, we have here in MPA. Okay. So, this is still the factored. So, to calculate the nominal, tawagin natin siyang tau n 
for punching load combination one that is uh, ultimate or factored divided by the reduction factor for shear of course all right so we have here in mpa so again hindi pa tayo sure hindi pa assurance na that is already the answer all right hindi pa tayo assured na that is already the answer the answer um bakit medyo malaki yung ating nakuha A nominal so let me check lang right check lang natin yung solution natin P1 minus RU1 is shear force. Okay, so uh, guys, medyo na kamali pala ako dito. So dito pala, dapat C plus D yan. No? Since this is D over 2 and this is D over 2. So di, hindi yan C plus 0.5D. Change ko siya dito. Okay, that should be C plus D. Ah, dito ko nakita yung mali sa solution ko. Alright, C plus D yan. Therefore, the punching shear stress area, ito, alright, so yung punching shear stress area, this one, tapos plus point D lang yan. Okay, plus point D. Nagkamali ako dyan. Alright, so automatically yung, um, Shear stress, nominal shear stress natin considering live load plus dead load. That is 0 0.489 MPA. Okay? So, hindi pa tayo assured na ito yung magiging sagot. Consider pa natin yung dead plus live plus earthquake. So, actually, you can also, para mas madali guys, pwede natin kunin yung VU uh, considering dead plus live load and VU considering dead plus live load plus earthquake load. Okay, pwede natin yung gawin. But dito, um, mas, mas pinisipay ko siya or mas um, detailed ang yung solution natin dito. Yung shear stress yung sinosolve natin. Okay, but mas madali siya if yung shear forces yung uh, uh, differentiate natin. So kung sino yung mas malaki. Okay, sige lang. So consider natin dead plus live plus earthquake load. Alright, so considering dead plus live plus earthquake load, of course, consider na natin yung moment dyan. Alright, ganyan. Okay, nakuha naman natin yung RU3 kanina. So, ilagay na lang natin RU3. Uh, ano yung value na yan? We have here 292.27 kN. Ito yung RU3 na gagamitin natin dyan. So, basically, yung VU natin for punching dito, uh, let's call that one as VU punching stress for load combination 2. That should be, in this figure, that should be the PU for load combination 2 minus RU3. Alright, so by the way, na-solve na, na, na din natin yung PU for load combination 2 sa pinakay taas. Yan yung value natin. Alright, so we have here the shear force for load combination. That is 953.33. Okay, so solve na natin yung ating shear stress. Ultimate punching for um, load combination 2. Ayan. Okay, so this value over the area. That value na divide natin siya kay area. So, yung area natin is of course the same lang dito. Alright? The same area yan. Perimeter times depth. So, yung ultimate or the factored shear, that is 0.39. Of course, yung, um, I will just copy this one. Okay, i-copy ko lang siya. Uh, of course, magiging 2 na rin ito. 2. And uh, this is punching shear stress for 2. 
that is 0 0.458. Alright. So, sa kanilang dalawa, saan yung mas malaki? So, ano yung mas critical? Dapat, itong considering dead load plus live load. So, ito yung sinasabi ko. Pwedeng mag-govern yung dead plus live or pwedeng mag-govern yung dead plus live plus earthquake load. Depends sa uh, situation. Okay? So, dito, dito nag-govern yung dead load plus live load. So, the answer should be for punching shear stress, the nominal punching shear stress for uh, considering the two load combination, that should be the maximum, okay, for NP1 or NP2. And yan dapat yung magiging sagot natin. Ayan. Okay, so sa MATCAD, uh, mas safe na mas safe na ganito yung gagawin natin. Maximum para uh, hindi na tayo confused, no? We don't need to see the exact solution dito. So, ito yung sagot natin for part 2. So, this is the solution. So, again, pwede rin i-consider na lang natin yung BU. I-check natin yung sino yung mas malaki sa kanila. So, as you can see dito, nakita na natin, mas malaki yung VUP1 dito kaysa VUP2. So, but uh, dito, ginawa ko siyang detail ang uh, gagami ang uh, isosolve talaga natin yung stresses nila then i-compare yung stresses ito yung detailed solution diyan all right now how about for part 3 uh, determine the required moment at critical section so for the moment saan ba yung magiging critical section natin so according to the code pa rin that the critical section for moment used in design that would be at the face of the support so dito siya dapat at a distance d from the face of the support. Ah, di yung ang uh, di gidenote ko dito dapat no dapat ibang variable ito. All right? Dapat ibang variable sa let's say tawagin ko na lang siyang um uh, x distance x. Okay? Because pwede tayong ma-confuse sa variable na ito at sa effective depth d. At a distance x from the face of the support. All right? Yan, no? Diyan tayo magmo-moment. Yan, ika bali, ikakat natin siya dyan. Then, yung critical moment natin, that would be force RU times the distance X. Yan. Pwede rin dito tayo mag-refer um, sa kabila. Then, ikat naman natin dito. Okay? So, dito na lang para mas uniform yung solution natin. So, we need to calculate the value of distance X dyan. Alright. Part 3 tayo. Ang haba. Okay. Move ko lang. Part 3. So, i-calculate ko muna yung um, distance x. So, by the way, yung RU natin, consider para natin yung dead load. Again, consider talaga natin yung dalawa dead plus live load combination. We don't know yet ano yung mag-govern. So, um, are you are you one? So, we have already calculated this one. So, yung are you one natin. Okay? So, uh, by this one, we need to calculate the value of x. So, yung x natin dyan, obviously, that is half ng 2 meters or 1 meters minus half ng ating Remember that um, nasa, gita, nasa face of support tayo minus half ng column dimension. Alright? So, 1 meters minus 1 half of the column dimension. So, yung column dimension natin is C. Okay? So, ilagay ko lang dito yung C. Yeah, of course. Alright? So, ito yung value ng X natin. Now, the critical moment here, madali lang yung moment, that is force times distance. So, force RU times distance X. But take note, yung RU natin dito is dalawa pa rin. This one and this one, doon sa likod. Okay? So, yung moment natin to be used in design. So, yung i-design kasi natin sa moment is yung reinforcing bars. Okay? Uh, critical moment to be used, uh, I will call that one as MU. Let's say critical, no? Because may MU na tayo kanina sa factor. Tawagin ko na lang siyang MU. Alright? M or okay, MU na lang. 
uh, for load combination 1. Tawagin ko siyang MU for load combination 1. Uh, that is dalawang RU, RU1, okay? So, dalawa ito, dalawang forces times distance X. Okay, times distance X. Um, we have there in kilonewtons meters. Uh, 339.36 kilonewtons meter. Uh, take note, factored pa ito, no? So, yung nominal for load combination 1, that should be MU1 divided by re the reduction factor for moment. Okay? Take note that the, re the reduction factor per moment is 0 0.90. Alright? This is for footing. So, obviously, yung reduction factor for footing is uh, basically 0.9 talaga yung mag -go so That is in kilonewtons meter. Um, I think required moment. Uh, no, hindi pala nominal yung hinahanap for question 3 or part 3. So, required. Pag sinabing required, guys, that should be the factored. So, okay na to. As is na ito, factored tayo dyan. Uh, this is considering and dead plus live load only. So, consider natin dead plus live plus the earthquake load. Alright? So, yung magbabago, again, yung magiging ganito yung ating forces dito. Ganyan. Okay? So, RU3 na yung gagamitin natin para i-multiply sa distance uh, X. Alright? So, RU3 tayo. So, that would be um, MU2. Alright? Um, dalawang RU3. Again, yung RU3 na solve na natin yan. Paulit-ulit. Lagay ko lang yung RU3 dito para ma-trace natin. Ayan. So, the value here is in kilonewtons meters. So, ano yung mas malaki sa kanila na required moment? Of course, 467.632 yung sagot. Alright, so the MU na gagamitin natin in designing, uh, uh, I will call that one as critical, in designing the reinforcing bar, that should be the maximum for MU1 and MU2. Alright. Okay, so this is the answer. So, ganito talaga sa board exam, guys. No? lalong laro na sa structural pwede natin tong piliin which is napakalik napakalaking mali natin no pag hindi natin chinek yung ibang parameters okay this is the solution for part 3 uh, recap lang natin ito yung solution natin for part 1 pwede nyo siyang screenshot okay ma mahaba pa dito because nag compute pa tayo ng mga load Okay, this is the solution. Uh, ito yung ating declaration of values. Yan. Load combination, uh, reduction factors. Up or part 1. Ito yung ginawa natin. Let's solve natin yung ating mga loads will be needed. Yan. At dito, nag-solve pa tayo ng mga loads. Kaya mahaba yung part 1. Okay, so this is the part 1. For part 2, this is the solution. Oh, medyo konti na lang yung solution because yung nagpapahaba sa solution natin is yung pag-compute sa mga...